right, everybody, today we're going to be making Holiday Joy Cider. This cider is going to be aged for about nine months after fermentation is completed. Let's go over the ingredients we have right here. Six gallons of apple cider. This is a Honeycrisp apple cider. So Honeycrisp apples are dessert apples, not cider apples. So it might impart a little bit more residual sweetness than the cider apples are, we'll find out. Within half of those gallons, we've created a half a gallon of cider starter. Uh, link to the video. 1,250 grams of molasses. We have six grams of fermato, which has been dissolved. Some spices that we're going to use. We have two cinnamon sticks, uh, about eight allspice berries, uh, a, chopped, uh, a chopped piece of whole nutmeg, and uh, about a gram of ginger, dry ginger. Uh, important note about the apple juice that we're using here. Uh, this is all store-bought apple juice. You don't have to have a specific type of apple juice. Uh, in order of preference, you should pick, um, if, you have, if you have the capability to, fresh pressed juice, then anything that looks cloudy inside the United States, we call this cider. So in preference, unfiltered apple juice, then filtered apple juice that is in the refrigerator section, and then filtered apple juice that is not in the refrigerator section. Another thing to look out for your apple juice is make sure it doesn't have any uh, eights or ites, so, so no sorbates, no uh, sulfites. If you see like ascorbic acid or malic acid on the back of it, that's just added for uh, flavor and preservation. So don't worry about that. For the secondary side of things, a uh, extraction of cinnamon, cloves, orange peel, ginger, uh, crystallized ginger, dry ginger, and allspice berries and nutmeg. It's gonna be aged with uh, some roasted French oats, a roasted French oak stick, medium plus roast. Um, and it's also going to be back sweetened and in a keg. So we're gonna to have to stabilize it with Camden tablets and potassium sorbate. All right, this is going to be a rather advanced recipe, rated A for advanced. Um, so we're going to need to do some, some special techniques. So one of those techniques we're going to be using are the use of these sous vide magnets on the outside of our pressure, inside and outside of our pressurization vessel. And when you take them off after fermentation is completed, it allows you to uh, effectively dry spice uh, your, your brew with whatever's inside the bag. The other one is also going to be pressurized fermentation. This is a pressure capable fermentation vessel. Instead of the normal like uh, airlock that you have, you have these uh, spunding valves that come with it. Uh, this spunding valve has been set to about 14 and a half PSI. And that is important because the yeast that we're using is uh, inside our starter is a uh, Coke de Blanc, which is a white wine yeast with a high temperature range of 70 degrees before we start producing esters. And we're going to want to reduce that ester production because we're not going to have any temperature control. So that is why it's being pressure fermented. So one thing I forgot to mention is we are actually gonna need sugar in this recipe too. So I just finished measuring up the molasses and it's about 950 grams. So that's about 200 grams, 300 grams short of our original estimate for the amount of molasses that we would need. but Basically, uh, we're too low on the molasses, so we need sugar to supplement it, and we'll get up to that target gravity of 1.075, resulting in about a 9.6 uh, ABV. Well, that's over there getting up to 160 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and start our spice bag. So the process for creating a spice bag and a pressurized fermenter is a, is a bit more complicated than a normal one. Um, because you're going to want to ensure that you don't introduce oxygen uh, into our brew. Sous vide magnets will go on the inside of our vessel like this and clamp, there we go. When you have the magnets clipped on the inside like this, um, you just remove the sous vide magnet and it causes it to fall into it. That's how we can reduce the amount of oxygen we're adding to it. While we're dry spicing, it'll never have any oxygen introduction. Take this up and then just pour our, our spices in here. Perfect. And now that we have all that in there, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. And as an additional method, so the sous magnet is sticking to it, it's funny. As an additional method, we're gonna go ahead and tie this bag like this and just get it all so it's kind of compact. So we put it in here like this, bam. So now that that bag is up there, uh, those dry ingredients are going to stay 
up there until we're done fermenting. So our next step that we're going to do is add all of our apple juice to our pressurized vessel. So what's gonna happen is we're going to go ahead and put about three gallons of our apple cider into this vessel. And then when we add the hot liquid into the top of it, it should cause the rest of it to cool down. And then we're going to add the remaining two gallons of it on top of that to create basically a stratification layer of heat. So the middle is going to be the hottest and it's going to expand out to the rest of it. We don't want all the heat concentrated on the bottom. We don't want all the heat concentrated on the top. Uh, if we have all the heat concentrated on the top, when we pour in our yeast starter, there is a very good chance it'll just kill our yeast. And we also don't want it at the bottom because we could potentially ruin our vessel. So that's the process. So go ahead and add our cider to our fermenter. One gallon at a time. Okay, now that that mixture is thoroughly combined, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a gravity reading. 1.075, that is exactly what we calculated. So go ahead and put our dehydrated fermato. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up so it gets all that nice stuff off the bottom of it. Just bam, right into the vessel here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pitch our yeast, which has been started. Nice live amount of yeast. The yeast I added to this is Coke de Blanc. It is a white wine yeast that is specifically for making cider. Well, I should say specifically making cider. It's made for making white wine, but it's very common in the cider making world. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. I'm gonna go ahead and close this vessel up and it's gonna go ahead and start fermenting at uh, pressurized fermentation of 14 and a half pounds. And it's probably gonna take about uh, four weeks to finish. All right, so I'll see you in four weeks. So what we're going to do is gonna do an initial tasting at four weeks to see how it tastes without any spice addition to it. Then we're going to go ahead and add the spices to it, let it sit in the fermenter for about two months. So after that, we're going to put it in our keg with our wood and let it age for about six months in the keg. And then we're going to transfer it over to another keg to get the wood out. Uh, it's time to start fermenting this bad boy.